Hey guys, Christy here from Desilva Life and welcome back to our channel. There are so many amazing features when it comes to the project management tool ClickUp. It's one of our favorite softwares if you haven't caught that already. But what it does so well is bring teams together. So in today's video, I really wanna talk about how ClickUp can help teams do more together, keeping everyone on the same page. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through some tangible examples as well as some really amazing features like dependencies and ClickUp automations, showing you how these can directly impact how your team works. Okay, let's dive in. So here we are in our project workflow mapping template. This template is actually available in our shop. And really what the goal is with this template is to show you what a project could look like mapped out in phases. Now I want to give you examples in here to show you how if you're utilizing this with a team, just a great tangible example of some of ClickUp's amazing features. Now I'll also show a little bit later in this video, not only some other cool features that you can do to really enhance team communication, but also go through more of like a pipeline style. So I'll go through one of our social media templates showing like if you have ongoing things like Instagram or email newsletters, um, how that can kind of look different with team collaboration. So Let's dive in. Here's the workflow mapping template. You could see the different tasks, instead of naturally being grouped by statuses, they're instead grouped by this custom field called phase. So you could see we have phase one, project prep, phase two would be whatever you call it, maybe implementation, design, etc phase three revisions, and then phase four offboarding and support. So right here at a glance, you're going to be able to see who on the team is doing what, when they are supposed to be working on this task, what the status is of that task or subtask, and then the priority as well. So right here, some of ClickUp's simplest features are going to really elevate your team communication because things aren't lost in email or Slack. They're here clearly stated in one place. That's the first thing. Using assignees, start date, due date, statuses, priorities, this is giving you that high level overview of where each thing is along the project process. The next thing I want to talk about are these little yellow and red circles here. These are what we call dependencies. Dependencies are amazing when you start really getting into more complex projects that you want to make sure everyone's on the same page and if one person is lagging on doing their job, the entire process is then moving forward, the entire project timeline, right? So how do you actually add these dependencies? Well, if you click into a task, there are a bunch of different ways you can do it. You can either go into the task settings, go into relationships, and then add dependencies. Every single task is going to have a link, and if you have task IDs on Click Apps, you'll have an ID as well. So one of my favorite ways to actually link dependencies is either in Gantt view or just right clicking a task and clicking dependencies. And then from this menu, you'll be able to say, okay, this specific task, onboarding checklist or um, yeah, so the onboarding checklist, right? It's not waiting on anything. This is the first thing I'm doing on this in this project, but it is blocking the client from filling out the onboarding form, right? Then you can go into fill out onboarding form. If you look in dependencies, you'll see that this is waiting for the onboarding checklist to be done. And then it's blocking prep for kickoff call and log into all softwares. Because if the onboarding form is not done, then you can't do the next two things, log into the softwares and prep for the kickoff call. So I'll show you if I try to go and complete this fill out client onboarding form, it's then going to say, hold on, this task is waiting for another task to be completed. So this is really great, not only for giving those warnings, but also if you show up to your desk and your task list and you see this red dependency on any of your tasks, you're gonna know, okay, I am blocking the next person from getting their job done. So if I lag on this or I'm having an issue where I don't have the information I need, I have to get this done because then it's gonna move the entire project later. Same thing goes if you see that yellow 
circle. You're going to go and show up to your desk and you're going to be like, okay, I actually can't work on this task because I'm waiting on someone else to get their job done. And say this does show up on your calendar. You're then able to just go right into the dependencies and relationships and see, okay, what am I waiting on? I'm waiting on this task. You can come in here. You can then chat with the team member and say at so-and-so, what's going on here? Do you need any help with anything? Um, and so this is just ClickUp's feature being able to, you know, tell the team what's going on. Now, a really awesome thing about this as well is I love viewing dependencies in Gantt view. Here you can kind of see this water flow of tasks that are waiting on or blocking other tasks. So if you have show and reschedule dependencies on, Pro tip, you can also hide and skip weekends. So we make sure that we're skipping any due dates on weekends. Then if anything is lagging at any point, then you're gonna see the rest of the entire project is gonna be pushed forward. So that's just a little intro into dependencies and Gantt view, such a powerful tool. Now let's talk about a couple other features that are really great for team collaboration. So just inside a task is where you can store any information about what's gonna happen in this task and then comment back and forth about this specific task, right? So if you need information from a team member or you wanna update someone on the status of this um, or put any links or things, you can add it all to this task. It's gonna be in one place. So at any point when someone comes to check in on the status, they then have all the information and updates about this task. Another thing is let's get into automations. Automations are so powerful and really they're less complicated than you think, especially when you're starting out. So if you look at these statuses, right, here's just a sample set. We have to do, in progress, review, needs edits, approved, complete. So in here, in automations, you can think of a couple just simple automations like when a status changes to review, then let's reassign Christy because she's responsible for the project reviews and add a due date. So change due date of one day after the trigger date, right? Here's a simple automation that ClickUp is gonna be doing the heavy lifting for you. You can do that with any other status, needs edits, ready to schedule, approved, etc. cetera. Um, maybe when something goes to client review, um, or review, then it creates a subtask for two or three days later to check in about that item instead of just sitting on the task list, right? It actually says, okay, it's time to check in. Um, so automations are super powerful, dependencies super powerful. Um, and then I just wanna go through a couple other quick things in terms of making sure everyone has what they need and knows what's on their task list. And then also let's talk about resourcing and capacity planning. So you can do this at a project level. We're gonna talk about a uh, workload view for a second, or you could do this on the everything view level. Let's do this on the project level and then we'll get into everything level for a couple different examples. So if I click workload and add this, what this is doing is saying, okay, anyone assigned to these tasks, we're gonna see what their workload and capacity is. Now you can do this by how many tasks are on their plate. Um, so if you set the capacity, let's say we only want Christy to have two tasks per day, then you're gonna see, okay, she has one for today, one for tomorrow, so she's not at capacity, right? What I think is more accurate is using time estimates. So if we go back into the list and we click into a task, you'll see there's this little hourglass here. What this is is just saying we estimate this task should take X amount of time. Now for like simplicity's sake, you could also bring this on the outside if you wanna do this like boom, boom, boom right in a row. So let's say onboarding checklist, we say this will take one hour. Let's say fill out the onboarding form, 25 minutes, and so on and so forth. When you add these time estimates to the tasks and you go back to workload, now you're gonna see 
that this is not reading task count, but it's reading hours, right? So you can set everyone's capacity. Christy works 24 hours. She's just part-time. Jefferson works 40 hours. Um, and you can go from there. And then I'll show you if you go ahead and you have X amount of tasks that equal over their capacity. So let's say um, six hours. Then when I go back to workload, it's going to become red. Okay, so this is actually split between two days. That's why it's going three and three. So let's just make this 20 hours. Then you're gonna see, okay, Christy is four hours over capacity. So whether you wanna use this with task load, with time estimates, you can even use sprint points, um, then you will be able to truly see an accurate representation of capacity of each of your team members. It is an incredible, incredible tool. Okay, so that is workload. Two more things I want to show you. Everything view and then creating a team member dashboard. So if I open up my um, column sidebar and I go into the everything view, what I love doing is creating a calendar for myself and then each team member or teaching them how to create these calendars if you have a lot of team members and you don't want your everything view to be cluttered up. So what you could do here is create a calendar view, make it private and pin it to the top so it's the first thing there for you. And then all you're gonna do is say that the assignee is me or the assignee is that team member. A couple other settings you need to have on are show subtasks. I also like seeing priority, time estimate, and tags. So you could even see here, the dependencies show up on this everything view as well. So now I have an immediate look into my workload, into team members' workloads. I can easily move things over from day to day if I finish my day and I have to adjust my schedule. And this really empowers every single team member to know exactly what they have to get done. Because a lot of times people come in to click up and with all the features, they're amazing, but it could be overwhelming and they think they have to click into every single list and granular place to find what they have to do. But creating these everything view calendars give this amazing snapshot into what actually has to get done. You can also see the different ways to view this if you wanted to view it in day, week, month. I'll click W and bring it to week. Um, so you can see exactly what you have going on if you don't want to look at it in a month view as well. And then the last thing I wanted to mention about team collaboration is the use of dashboards. So not only for dashboards and reporting and seeing, you know, on a specific project, real time updates, but a really great thing is also to create a team member dashboard. So really, I just love having a few different things on a team member dashboard to really empower that person. So I'm gonna name this team member dashboard. We also have a whole entire YouTube video on five dashboards that will change your business. Team member dashboard is one of them. Um, and so what you can do is you can add cards with task lists. And really what I love to break up is do today, do this week and overdue. And so you are going to say, okay, do today, you would say this is like Christie's dashboard or whatever, select location all, filter that the assignee is that person, so I'll put me, and then you would wanna do another one since this is due today, that due date is today. And you can also do today and earlier if you want, and then you would add the card. So then from there, oh, also another thing, you wanna make sure to include subtasks, very important if you use subtasks. Um, so then from there, what you could do is duplicate this and say overdue. All you'll have to do is adjust the filter that the due date instead of today is overdue, apply. And then you can see all the things that are overdue and then duplicate this again and you can say do this week. And this one I typically will make a little bit bigger. And then I will say this is 
due this week apply. And instead of this one being just grouped by status, I'll also actually group it by due date. So it would show up like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc. So you could see tomorrow, one thing on the list. Um, so creating these team member dashboards is also a great way to empower your team member to just get an insight snapshot into what they have going on. Is there anything overdue? What's coming up next? As well as that everything view calendar. So that was a lot of info, but I hope that gives you just a taste into the incredible features ClickUp has to really enhance your team collaboration. So I hope that was helpful for you in just giving you some tangible examples of how you can use ClickUp to help your team do more together. Whether you already have a team and you're trying to really streamline your ClickUp, or if you're wondering how to build out your ClickUp and what features to use as you're preparing to build a team. Either way, if this video is helpful for you, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because we have so many other amazing tutorials on ClickUp features that will totally help you grow and scale your business with ease. We also have an entire team management template bundle in our product shop that will give you some plug and play resources to really help you streamline your team success in ClickUp. And if you wanna take it a step further and support our channel a little bit more, feel free to tap that PayPal link in the description below. With that, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs>